In a previous video, I designed and fabricated a contemporary fountain for a koi pond. With the support structure complete, I needed to produce the fiberglass bowl that would sit on top. Because the entire piece had been produced through digital fabrication, I could use a CNC to produce the mold. The smart part of the mold is cut with a ball end cutter. Then, the 2D profile is cut with a flat end mill. For this project, I'll be making a simple 8 foot diameter bowl. This bowl will hopefully fit perfectly into the water jet cut aluminum base that I made in part 1. This method of constructing a mold could be used to produce a variety of shapes. Dashboard for a classic car, or a bicycle seat, for example. The possibilities are really endless. Pink foam is perfect for this kind of mold, for its consistency and ability to be sanded smooth. By slightly onion skinning the profile, I save the spoil board, since this edge is easy enough to clean up. I needed to make a 90 degree workspace so I could glue up the sections using the center registration. For the glue, I'm using door and window foam glue from Great Stuff. This type of glue works great and doesn't expand like other glues. After eight to 10 sheets, I'll stop to weigh down the layers and make sure everything is lining up. Here you can easily see the shaped profile of the two inch foam sections. Here you can see the registration that I used to line everything up. With the two halves glued up, they can now be joined into one. I left two sections unglued, in case I needed to finesse the center seam. Before I do this, I need to check the overall. With almost 50 sections, even a 64th of an inch per section can add up to almost an entire inch. Here I'll cut about 5 eighths of an inch from the middle of the bowl where there isn't any curvature. This plywood ring was tested against the aluminum structure and it will dictate the final rim of the bowl. Cutting off the steps is like real world anti-aliasing. To give added structure to the mold, a bottom plate is also cut out. I'll be gluing the mold together out here because fully assembled, it'd be too big to fit through the door. The top ring will need to be completely planar to ensure that the water will flow over the edges as evenly as possible. I wanted to make sure there wasn't any twist in the glue up. I'll flip this over to focus on the bottom of the mold. The bottom plate will add structure to the other half of the foam sandwich. This outline will help me place the glue.
This is also foam glued into place. I'll use a hot wire cutter to trim off the excess pink foam, using the top and bottom plates as guides. Using a hand rasp, I'll gently remove glue squeeze out and any leftover onion skins. It is important to retain the CNC surface as the true shape. To make sure the fiberglass is able to bend over the edge, I'm putting a quarter inch radius on the lip. Using thickened epoxy, I'll seal the face of the pink foam. This is West System's special clear epoxy and will not eat the foam like some resins might. Thickened epoxy is easier to sand and it will generally stay where you put it. I'll put all the links to the materials I used in the description. I made a notch tool out of a Bondo spreader. The notches allow you to quickly build up a surface evenly, as you can easily see the surface offset. Once this cures, it can be lightly sanded with 80 grit sandpaper. With a flat spreader, I'll fill in the grooves until the surface is smooth, sanding between coats. Because this was a mold, I knew that I would need draft on this edge. Rather than build up the entire face, I'd limit the draft to about four or five inches. This is well beyond the two inches required. This band will also give me a consistent reference. I glued it in place with thickened epoxy. I'll use Bondo to build up a slight taper. I coated the sanded Bondo with epoxy so that the entire mold face was consistent. I applied multiple coats of wax to have the best chance of the fiberglass releasing. This is how the mold looked after about five coats of wax. This is 1.5 ounce chopped fiberglass mat. It will provide extra thickness for the layup, which will consist of five layers, three layers of six ounce woven and two layers of chopped. These are alternated and rotated 60 degrees for strength. Polyester resin will be used for its resistance to UV versus epoxy.
This is a tip for easily cutting woven fiberglass. Simply pull on a single strand and it will show you the meandering line to cut on to avoid crossing the weave. With the fiberglass all pre-cut, we could begin to do the layout. The first layer of woven is saturated against the mold face. After this was done, the other layers could be added two at a time and rolled with laminating resin. This was sanded in preparation for the final coats of finishing resin. We decided to tint the resin white because the goal was to have the bowl be translucent rather than transparent. If I did this again, I'd probably add a bit of white throughout the process. A bit of extra fabric was added to the center of the bowl where a fitting would be attached. After a final sand with 220 and trimming the lip, the bowl was complete. Now it was finally time to remove the bowl from the mold. I had no idea how this was going to go. Relieved at how great it came out, we painted the same white tinted resin on the bottom of the bowl as well. To finish off this bowl, the bulkhead would need to be installed in the bottom. Now to finally unite the fiberglass bowl with the base. Thanks for watching.